Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 100 and we have a very special one for you today. Today's fish is quite possibly the most important fish in the world. Um, I can't stress enough about this fish. You definitely have heard of this fish. This is not super rare. This is something that you know you have eaten if you have pretty much ever eaten fish. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is, bam, the Atlantic Cod. Now, the Atlantic Cod, or scientific name Gaddis Morhua, Morhua, Mor, M O R H U A, Morhua. Again, that is Gaddis Morhua. It is part of the family of Gaddidae, which is the family of cods. Now, I said Atlantic Cod. A lot of people don't realize that cod is kind of a generalized term um granted i do believe most of the americans um cod availability is atlantic cod i don't think the pacific cod i'm not entirely sure but this one to me is uh the most important one because of some of the history behind this fish and we'll get into that in the future now in terms of the atlantic cod if you can imagine it is native to the Atlantic Ocean. Um, more specifically to the Northern Atlantic, uh, pretty much along all of the coastlines in the North Atlantic. Um, but they're found from relatively shallow down to 300 meters, about a thousand foot in depth. They're cold water fish and so they're kind of following that um, water column. That, that They're kind of following a they're only found in the shallows at night when the water up top is a little warmer. Um, I mean, water up top is always warmer, but what's what's really they're, they're really trying to search for an extremely like kind of specific temperature. So in the daytime, the the top of the water is too hot, so they're a little bit lower, they're a little bit deeper, a little bit cooler waters. Then at nighttime, when the top water kind of cools off, they'll migrate up the water column and hang out in that area to where they can f find that extremely stable temperature, that extremely specific temperature. Um, and the reason why for this is apparently because of their metabolism. Um, this was an incredibly interesting thing that I had no idea of. Um, a decrease of only two and a half degrees Celsius, which is five degrees Fahrenheit, caused their met metabolic rate to increase by a rate of 15 to 30 percent um that's a lot of energy expenditure just to kind of maintain your body heat so yes they're definitely gonna find that super specific temperature um also what a lot of people don't realize they are a shoaling species they move in these very large aggregations um and they're actually size structured um and what I mean by that is, is the larger fish are actually on the in the front and on the outsides of the aggregation and they're acting as scouts and they're leading the shoal in all these different directions especially during uh, migrations to the inshore inlets for feeding purposes um, the smaller fish are kind of hanging out in the back and I don't want to say just surviving, but they're getting protection from the size of the shoal um, and helping themselves out, but they're not really leading, um, if that makes sense. <clears throat> now, in terms of size, they are a much larger fish than people think. Um, many people think of cod, they see the little tiny fillets they see on their plates or in the grocery stores, but in fact, cod are actually can get pretty significant in size they're commonly found at 100 to 140 centimeters which is 40 to 55 inches i say common that's like the larger side of average um, i wouldn't say they're you're just gonna catch 50 inches all the time but they're definitely bigger than you know your 24 inch fillet that you see on your plate but they're you know i say 40 40 to 55 inches there's many specimens that have been caught over 180 centimeters you know 70 inches in length 
Um, and they can be well over 50 kilograms, which is 110 pounds. In fact, that's what this fish right here was caught off the coast of Norway and was 109 pounds, I believe. I'm not entirely sure on that one. But this one is a, this one's a pretty big one. But it, I hope this illustrates that this fish is significantly you know, larger than... Um, you would think just looking there at their flays. Um, in terms of how, you know, what is a cod, um, they're pretty thick bodied. This one's not necessarily an apt um, picture for them, but you can see here this is um, more than likely a pregnant female. Um, that's a little thicker, but basically what I'm trying to say is they're a little thicker bodied um, than most other streamlined fish. They have this um, really large head, um, thick head, and what's really characteristic is they have this one barbel, that one little chin whisker, um, like a like a teenager in high school got their first beard hair and they're so excited they left it unshaved. They got this one little barbel. Um, they do use that for as a sensory organ. Um, Something else to note about these, they're pretty um, distinctive cod as a family. They're distinctive as having these three dorsal fins, so these three fins on the back and these two anal fins. It's pretty indicative of the cod family. Um, and if you can't tell by the pictures, they, they're extremely variable in color. There'll be um, these red spots, the olive green, they're usually speckled not always um but what else is interesting to note this very obvious lateral line we've talked about the lateral line system before very rare is it in a fish to have this much of an outline denoting where that lateral line is that's an also pretty good characteristic <clears throat> now it is a relatively long-lived fish um more than 20 25 years that's definitely not unheard of um and they're actually a incredibly uh, prolific spawner. Um, I should mention that they are an apex predator as well, meaning they kind of eat anything, um, especially relative to their own body weight. And they are cannibalistic species. If they find a small cod, they will 100% eat that small cod. Um, juveniles and young seem to eat crustaceans, crabs, things like that whereas the um, older ones really go after those uh, bony fish. But now, going back to the spawning, they are an incredibly prolific spawner, and they can usually start reproducing at two, three years old. Um, sure, Smith. So the lateral line system is a system of, or sensory organs going down the side of a fish that allow a fish to detect changes in uh, pressure around them so you know how when you um, you see a wave in the water well that wave is actually in the middle or when you have your hand underwater and you try and push it you know you're creating that little shock wave of water that lateral line system actually is what they use to detect those minute changes and they can detect incredibly incredibly small changes which allow them to determine where predators it's allowing them to kind of sense is there a predator is there a friend is there a large fish small fish behind me um that i can't see because you have to remember that you know they're swimming in the dark they're swimming deep they may not always be able to see and they'll also be able to detect changes on like uh where the rocks are and things like that they can swim right along rocks that's why fish even in the dark don't bump into things they're actually sensing um Think of it, okay, here's the, I just thought of this. Guarantee you someone else has thought of this as well. Think of it as sonar for bats, but they're using the water instead. They're not using sonar there or echolocation like whales or anything like that. It's very, very specific, kind of like how sonar would work. They're reading the reflections off stuff. So, okay, going back to the spawning, um, they usually start reproducing at about two to eight, two to three years of old. Apparently, some of them will not start reproducing till they're eight years old. Um, but females can produce a 
lot of eggs, up to somewhere between three to nine million eggs during spawning. Uh, that's a lot of eggs, um, incredible amount of eggs. Um, something interesting to note about their reproductive reproductive strategy, though, is it seems they they follow a lecking system. L E K. That's a lek. And if you know anything about prairie chickens, prairie chickens actually follow a very similar pattern. In fact, that's where the term let comes from, I believe. Um, so what happens is males kind of pick an area, an extremely small area, not necessarily a nest, but more of like a, um, how do I put this? A look at me spot, a spot that they defend that they clean up and that they say they try and entice the females to come to them and say I'm good I'm an incredibly robust male come mate with me and then the females will go around and they'll choose many different males it's not just one um, fun fact they also produce a small sound well not a small sound a sound while they're um, spawning the males are to kind of entice the females in so kind of on that same note let's start let's talk about the interesting fact of the video um the interesting fact of the video um very much falls in line with a previous fish friday video um, fish friday number 65 which was a tuna video and this is the reason why i picked this fish not only is this more than likely quite possibly one of the most important saltwater fish in the world due to the commercial aspect of this and um this but there's also a lot of issues with this fish um in that fish friday video number 65 hold on let me get a quick drink of coffee okay <clears throat> so in that fish friday video we talked about a movie that i still highly encourage everyone to go rent on amazon prime um it's like two dollars to rent on amazon prime it's like seven dollars to buy um, i personally try and watch it once a year it is called end of the line um end of the line I, it's an incredibly good video it was done i believe in the late 1990s um but that in that video it talked about the dangers of overfishing and how the oceans are crashing um and cod are actually one of the main example and that's why we're going to talk about the history of the cod which to me is the most interesting fact and what a lot of people don't realize um especially the you um north american uh cod strain so in sort of cod the atlantic cod structure there's your north american cod and then there's your like european coastline cod um, and they're kind of like, think like just two different populations. They're still the same species, but just kind of stick into their own sort of side of the Atlantic Ocean or uh, the pond as the United Kingdom people will call it. I don't know, that's just a quick little. I'm a new dad, I get to throw out new dad jokes like that. Um, but over in Canada, um, Granted, this is definitely a little bit of an exaggeration, but it was once said that the cod were so populous off the coast of Nova Scotia that you could walk across the sea on their backs. Um, obviously, that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but definitely there was a lot of cod there. Um, it was the largest cod fishery in the world. In when I say largest cod fishery, I'm talking about like, this had been fished for 500 years. Cape Cod was literally named after this fish. It supported hundreds of uh, fishing communities. Um, was their entire lifeline, actually. And just it, the entire population depended on this. It was very unique to this fish. They went out, they caught the fish, they came back, they either sold them overseas, they ate them in town, they sold them, you know, around. It was, they, this fish is what kept these communities alive. Well, then in the 60s or so, basically right when sonar became prevalent and larger ships started 
being able to be produced. Well, these larger fish came, or these larger fishing ships came in, and using sonar, they were able to get these large shoals. So instead of you know you going off word of mouth and oh this spot worked over here, I'm not sure why, but I know this is a popular fishing spot for the fishermen, um, and they were doing it with hand pulled nets. Now you have this giant tanker ship coming in with you know a half a mile wide net and I'm probably under exaggerating the size of the net and that that ship has this amazing sonar that can say oh there's a cliff right here or there's a rock right here I can turn slightly to the left bring my net directly next to that rock go in a circle and now I have caught every single fish in that little in that shoal um, so you know, that just caused an explosion in the amount of, um, in the amount that were being produced. In fact, if you want to look at the, um, graphs right here, you can see this is the capture of Northwest stock in million tons, a million tons, not tons, one million tons, meaning that in the sixties, you have this um, 1.7, we'll say, million tons of cod caught, um, which is the combination of both the other countries and Canada. So Canada was definitely not catching as much, but you brought in these large um, outsides. And you can see here, here's a breakdown of all of them. People were catching a lot of fish, basically. Um, so all these fish were being caught well when you're able to catch the entire population it was an issue and it caused an incredible collapse of the fishery and this is where the sort of timeline falls into play and what I've preached about there is that you cannot um, par par partitionally bargain with natural resources um, Sadly, this became a very big political aspect. The scientists came in in the um, 1980s, I believe, and said, we have to stop catching cod or this fishery is going to collapse. And it was fought incredibly hard. And you have to think back, think back on this. It had already collapsed. Um, the fishery had partially collapsed, but it had regained some. Um, basically everyone was saying no this is fine this is fine the fisheries will it'll rebound it'll come back um we we know we caught too much in the 60s but the scientists kept saying no you can't do this and in the 1990s it became dire um late eight, 1980s it became incredibly dire the scientists said you we simply cannot do this well that became a, another political aspect because think about these nova scotia villages um, these people, they had been fishing for generations. This wasn't a um, simple thing. It, their literal identity, their cultural identity was based around these fish, this fish and going out and catching this fish. And there were armed guards at town hall meetings. There was, you know, th people threatening to, um, you know, light government buildings on fire. And the government kind of, I don't want to say they swayed, but they said, um, you know, we will put a moratorium, which is a cease all fishing. And fishermen, you know, it was really bad. Go look at some of the cliffs back then. You know, people saying, you're going to have to shoot me if you're going to stop me from fishing. We're going fishing tomorrow. And it was just, it was a really bad deal. So, unfortunately, the fishermen kept fishing which caused the oops, the 90s collapse and in 93 the entire fishery collapsed to one percent of historical um to historical numbers basically 99 percent of the fish were gone and this is the problem with those older fishermen's reasonings those fish were going to go anyway um, they thought the government was coming in to take their jobs, 
they would have lost those jobs and these fishing regardless, continuing on with the practice that they had. Um, so it was kind of, I don't want to say they shot themselves in the foot, but there was an issue with that. And that is a big problem with most commercial fishing. People don't see this fish. You can see, you know, there's less cows in the, in the pasture, things like that. You can't see that there's less fish in the water water you're depending on someone else to do that and so it just created this huge issue and to the point that scientists were unsure whether the this the north american atlantic cod would ever come back that the, there was a time where they almost considered the north atlantic cod functionally extinct meaning there were fish there but there wasn't enough for them to reproduce now kind of on a brighter note there are some recovery efforts there's multiple recovery efforts actually um there's two sort of stocks on north america there's the gulf of maine stock and the georgia's bank stock the gulf of maine stock um still is classified as overfished and below the target biomass level um and by the way that is they are still being fished today that is according to the 2021 stock assessment um they're still fish just they're a lot more heavily regulated which thank goodness um because they would have collapsed so they're still being fished and they're a little overfished um but they there is a slight recovery effort going on or not recovery recover recruitment coming in um there was a 10-year rebuilding plan that was put in place in 2014 trying to rebuild it by 2024. this is the second rebuilding plan for the gulf of maine stock um the first one was incredibly unsuccessful. This one is slightly more successful, but is definitely not getting the population back. The Georgia's bank stock, um, it's still overfished, but it is doing significantly better. Now I should say the European uh, population, they definitely took a hit and their population numbers dropped drastically. They are actually in such a good recovery that European has actually removed them from sort of their endangered species and they are labeled as a sort of a least concern north american is still listed as vulnerable by all accounts they should be endangered but it is what it is so that's the interesting fact um that is why this is fish friday number 100 possibly the most important fish ever in the world definitely in the history you're talking about a fish that this is why the vikings came over they came over for cod fishing um this is why a lot of those communities were founded in Canada and I cannot stress this enough please know where your fish are coming from it's more red listed in America for improper fishing practices I eat plenty of cod don't get me wrong but know where you try and figure out where your cod is coming from is it coming from a sustainable source um, you know Noah has a great one on there um you have you know the seafood watch it tells you like kind of where it's coming from their fishing rates you know i'm definitely i love eating cod i would definitely eat cod um see right here although populations are well below target levels u.s wild caught atlantic cod is still a smart seafood choice because it is sustainably managed under a rebuilding plan that allows limited harvest by u.s fishermen i disagree with that a tiny bit but i'm definitely not going to say stop eating cod i'm not eat stopping eating cod but try and get your european cod if you're over in europe smith go to town eat all the cod you want i am definitely not going to say stop eating cod um, if you're in America, keep eating cod. Just try and be a little aware and just know the history. You know, you shouldn't feel bad about eating cod, but understand like what this fish has had to go through and the fact that there was a point in time where cod might have been lost. Um, and here's another kind of interesting fact. I talked about the cod being the apex predator. When that population crashed in North America, it wreaked incredible havoc on the ecosystem um, when you remove an apex predator like that it allows the problems 
not the problems, but your lower level trophic organisms to explode. That is why Maine has so many lobsters. Um, granted, Maine has always had lobsters, but when they removed cod from this fishery, the lobsters, your little worms and algae and things like that, they exploded. They absolutely exploded. Your lower level trophic organisms just exploded in population numbers because they were not being removed from the ecosystem by the cod which those increased lobsters increased crabs that caused the um the aquatic vegetation in those coves and everything to actually decrease as well which shows that you know predators do play a vital role in ecosystems but thank you guys so much again i really appreciate it oops again if i don't please be safe have a great day please leave a like comment and subscribe if you do i really appreciate it hope to see you again hope you enjoyed this fish friday 100 weeks um well 101 weeks of doing this we missed one friday hope you apologize that was the week that my baby daughter blessed us with their presence um but thank you guys so much again take care of yourselves take care of your loved ones and peace